Last year, I compared the American Giant Classic Zip Hoodie against the competition in a similar price category, and it basically dominated the competition. It was really, it still continues to this day to be my favorite hoodie. I mean, the thing's burly, it just looks good, and it's, it's built to last. And not only that, but the comment section, it was full of people who echoed the same sentiment, people who loved the American Giant Classic Zip hoodie, or even the pullover. Matter of fact, my wife kept on stealing mine, so I bought her one of her own. What I was curious about, however, was whether or not the other products from American Giant stood up to the same standard. Were they just as good? I mean, this hoodie was such a gem. Did it make sense to assume that the rest of their products were equally as good? Well, that's what this video seeks to find out. Now, full transparency, American Giant did send me these t-shirts. However, they recognize that I have to offer my own opinion. They don't get to review or revise this video before it goes live. The understanding was they're gonna send them. I'm gonna give my honest thoughts on them and that's the end of it. So that's what we're gonna do. The t-shirts we're gonna be looking at are the classic tee, which I have in both crew and V-neck in black and sage colors. The heavyweight pocket tee in their iron color. The premium slub in crew and v-neck in the colors bone, stormy gray, and black amber, which is that sort of merlot color. Now, before we break these t-shirts down any further, there's a couple things that apply across the board to all of them. And that is that they're all made of American grown cotton. They're all sewn up and made here in the USA in American factories. And there's an entirely USA based supply chain. So for those of you who have been very vocal about buying domestic goods, if you are in the US, well, this is the company for you. Now, let's get into breaking them down one by one. Let's start with the classic cotton tee for $38. This is a 3.8 ounce midweight cotton tee with sort of a pre broken in feel. The classic tee is just as its name suggests classic looks and feel, which basically feels kind of like just an upgrade to your old favorite. Next up is the heavyweight pocket tee for $36. This is made from 6.2 ounce cotton. Now this would be the t-shirt that I would work in for sure. The rib knit collar is burlier than the other two models and that little pocket becomes hard to live without once you're used to it. These days I use it to hold a face mask, but when I'm working, it's essential for writing instruments and small tools, stuff like that. Finally, there's the premium slub tee for $48, which is a beefy 6.6 .6 ounce cotton with a very interesting slubby texture, which makes it look distinctly high end. This is American Giant's best selling t-shirt and it's not hard to see why. I love that color depth and saturation, especially in that black amber color, which is very rich and vibrant. The slubby texture is interesting, but not obnoxious. And the feel is substantial, but not scratchy or stiff. Of the three t-shirts, these are my favorites by far. So the big question here that I started the video out with is are American Giant t-shirts just as good as their hoodies? And I have to preface this by saying the hoodie was really shockingly good. You know, it was, it was distinct. It had a lot of unique design qualities to it and features that I had never seen in a hoodie before. And for those reasons, it became an instant favorite. A t-shirt, on the other hand, is sort of a tried and true design. There's not really much that you can do to a t-shirt which won't overcomplicate it or just make it harder to wear. I mean, little things that you can do don't even make that much of a difference. For example, some t-shirts are woven without side seams. I have never been bothered by a side seam. So even things like that, you know, they don't really make a huge difference. These t-shirts, by the way, do have side seams. Again, they don't really bother me. So. Yes, they definitely feel substantial and they have that American Giant DNA woven throughout, but the wow factor isn't as dramatic. So if you're looking to get some t-shirts which just blow you away and it's like, oh my God, these are incredible. I gotta tell everybody I know about them. These probably aren't gonna do it. These just feel like a good solid staple in your wardrobe. You could replace every t-shirt that you have with one of these and be perfectly fine. Now, even though these tees are priced significantly higher, than your run-of-the-mill Hanes six-pack, you are getting a lot more for your money. And I think that these really occupy a nice spot between the basic run-of-the-mill free t-shirts that you get from brands and stuff like that. Heck, I worked most of my life in high-visibility Gildan t-shirts that just had the company name on them. They live between those and a much more high-end premium product like those from Studio D'Artisan where they're like $145 for a loop-wheeled t-shirt. 
These are significantly less than that. So I think that the value proposition is a good one. But let's take a look at a more direct comparison and one that's more recent for me, and that is the t-shirts that I got last year from Taylor Stitch, which I was raving and ranting about because they were fantastic. Now, those were a 70% cotton, 30% hemp blend. We're not going to talk about the, the heavyweight tees that they make. I think that the Taylor Stitch heavyweight tees are, are kind of a disaster unless you fit like a certain body type. I got a large, it fit like a medium, and it was honestly just a bit too thick and scratchy. You know, the weave was just too, uh, too coarse to be a, a really good t-shirt in my opinion. So let's look rather at the ones that I, I spoke about before. And I think that those were just the, the hemp blend ones, all right? Those were priced somewhere around $40. So very, very close to these here from American Giant. Now, occupying that same price category, the ones from Taylor Stitch are made in China. And oftentimes, if something is made in China, you expect to get a bit of a price relief, you know? You expect it to cost a little bit less than a USA-made variant. These cost basically the same. So, would you rather have American-made cotton, American factories, the whole USA supply chain, or would you rather have something that's made in China? Now, the question is not, you know, an open and closed case by any means. It's gonna be different for everybody. And by no means is everything made in China junk. Just have a look at Grant Stone. But in my opinion, for the same price, I would rather get the American Giant. The one criticism that I would have against these t-shirts is that they're all just a bit shorter than I'm used to. Now, this is not a problem if you wear them untucked. Matter of fact, I think it's probably better because if you have a longer tee and you wear it untucked, it can look kind of goofy. But if you like to wear your t-shirts tucked in underneath a shirt like I do here, then these could be a little bit short for doing that. So whether they're an undershirt for you or they're gonna be a standalone layer will really make all of the difference. And we're not talking like a drastic difference. These things won't like expose your midriff if you reach up or something like that. They're fine. They're just a little bit shorter than I'm used to. So I think that works great if they're a standalone layer. If you like to wear them as a base layer and tuck them in, but I think they're just a little bit too short. These tees are priced competitively. They're American made, the whole American supply chain, and you can work in the pocket tee. You can wear the lighter classic tee when it's really, really hot outside. Or if you just wanna go premium across the board, that slubby texture and the rich color that you get with those premium tees, it's, it looks a lot more expensive than it actually is. So I think that they're fantastic. But of course, I wanna know what you think. The best feedback I can get is in the comments section below. There's always a lot of very thoughtful comments down there, along with a huge few trolls, but that's, <laughs> this is YouTube, what are you gonna do? Anyway, so please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Am I way off base here? Am I missing something? Does somebody out there have a lot more experience with these than I do? I wanna know your opinion. So please leave your comment in the comment section below. Anyway, guys, until next time, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.